MG's answer to the MX-5, so let's see what it's like. Well, 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 the old Rover K series. That wasn't my driver. Is that the first time that's happened in a test drive? So the MGF was released in 1995, it was later revised in 2002 to make the MGTF. So there was a few changes that happened then. Uh, they changed the front end, they made the chassis a lot stiffer, and they moved away from hydrogas suspension to conventional shocks and springs. So there's a few different engine options. There was a 1.6 with 115 brake, a 1.8 with 135 brake, which is what this one is, and then there was later a VVC with 160 brake horsepower. And I think there was also a Steptronic 1.8 in there with 125 brake horsepower. So let's take a wee look around this one and see what we think of the appearance. So it's quite plain on the outside. There's no side strips, there's no body side mouldings. You also got these um, air inlets here for the radiator. And it does look actually pretty decent in this colour. This colour, what colour is this? <laughs> what is this? Le Mans green. Le Mans green. So this one's Le Mans green, which I think sets off really, really nicely. Black hood, this one's recently had um, the rear glass replacing on it. Right, and then the view around the back, you've got these twin exhausts down here. You've got this little mesh grill down there. So they do look really, really neat. We built in um, a high level brake light there. I mean, it does actually look like a spoiler, it isn't. It's just built into the design of the, uh, the boot. So yeah, it's a pretty looking little car. Can I say pretty? <laughs> Alloy fuel filler cap there and a little bee sting aerial. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's a neat little car. I think the front looks a lot better on these TFs. You've got these projector headlights. Um, this has obviously all been restyled, the grill. Uh, you've got the air inlet there as well, and I think this spoiler, um, I think this little splitter on the bottom is probably added on, uh, made out of rubber, so that's good. You probably won't break it if you hit anything, but yeah, they've turned it into quite a nice car. When you look at this one, you can see it does sit a little bit lower than standard as well on those eye back springs, so I think that does help it a bit, gives it that sporty stance. So what do you guys think? Cool or not cool? Right, let's take a wee look inside. Um, so this one's fitted with uh, cloth seats. Uh, quite a nice dashboard in these here. You've got the silver um, backing on the dials, uh, red line just before 7,000. You've got a wee MG badge on the rev counter there. Uh, and you've also got your warning lights down the centre. And over in the centre console here, you've got your clock and you've got engine oil temperature, which is pretty handy. There's a lot of nice little design features like you've got this MG badge up here on the dashboard. Um, this has been replaced um, for a standard item. Uh, and these are aftermarket, as you can see here, and you've got your electric window switches. Quite a few speakers in these. You've got tweeters up here, speakers down here in the door, and then you've also got some speakers here behind the, um, the seats. So this one's fitted with a leather steering wheel. Uh, it's trimmed pretty nicely, MG badge in the middle, and it's obviously an airbag unit as well with the horn buttons on either side. So yeah, it's, it's, it's quite a nice place to be, and it's actually reasonably comfortable, I think, to drive. A uh, good bit of adjustment, um, certainly in the, the seat and the steering column. And for me, being short, there is plenty of headroom. I've got about that much above my head. So, um, so it definitely gets a thumbs up for me for the interior. So one thing to mention is the driving position that I can't quite get used to is the clutch pedal. So if you look at that there, my heel's totally on the floor. Then when you're putting the clutch in, you're kind of like angling forward like that. So I didn't really like that. Uh, I mean, they're well spaced, you know, enough, so that there's plenty of room like that. But yeah, just that, that clutch pedal setup is a little bit unusual. Um, driving position, apart from that, is actually pretty decent. The steering wheel set quite low, which I actually prefer. I mean, it is height adjustable, but yeah, it's, it's quite a comfortable, sporty position. Um, and the gear stick as well, that's not too much of a reach far away. So yeah, everything except that clutch pedal actually works out pretty well, in my opinion. Right, let's take a wee look at engine bay. So you guys will probably know it's a mid-engine car, so you can get a little bit of a view of the engine here. Access is a wee bit tricky. So that's all you can see from this view. 
Right, so to access the engine from the other side, it, it's reasonably involved. You know, you have to move the hood back, and um, there's a bar that needs to come off, and there's an access panel behind where those speakers are. So, yeah, I mean, it'd be difficult, you know, doing a head gasket or something. Uh, are these prone to head gaskets? I think, being a case series. <laughs> so this one's actually had the head gasket done. The current owner's had this one just over a year, so fingers crossed it doesn't need a head gasket done again. It's relatively low mileage, this one. It's just over 70,000. Uh, and it's had a few wee bits and pieces done to it, so we'll cover the engine in the test drive and see how good it actually is. But um, so far, yeah, it's certainly been a pleasant car to drive, but yeah, access does look really, really tricky. Uh, I don't know how time consuming it would be doing a standard service, doing the plugs, air filter and oil filter on it. So yeah, that's your mid-engine car. Right, and to access the front, you have to go back into the boot with the key, and there's a wee handle there you pull, so that's a bit random. Uh, and then we'll see how much space there is in here to store your luggage. Well, not a lot because you have your spare tyre in there. It's the first time I've actually seen under one of these. So your battery, so your servo and stuff like that, and that's probably clutch fluid in there. Um, yeah, so you're probably not able to store a great deal in there. But at least I know where the tyre is on it now. <laughs> right, so our first drive in an MGTF. Let's find out what it's like, if it's any good. I guess the main thing I want to try and establish today is, is it a better buy than the MX-5 that I had? So that remains to be seen. Right, so let's see if this TF is fast or not. 135 brake, or the eight and a bit seconds to 60? Think so, maybe, yeah, I'd like have that. to look 8.2 maybe. So yeah, like with any K-Series, all the power is up the top end and it's definitely not as quick as the, the Coupe, the VVC Tomcat, I would say anyway. Yeah, I, would say. I think there's a good bit difference in them. It feels like more than 10 brake horsepower difference in the two actually. And yeah, they just don't have the torque these that the, the 143's got, which is a bit of a shame. So you do need to work it a wee bit harder, which is no bad thing, but... The extra thousand makes it a good bit quicker. So that's the moral of this story. You have to wring its neck and you have to hit it off the red line um, or it is a good bit slower. But yeah, that's actually pretty fun. I enjoyed that. Um, I ain't holding on the door until I like the sewer yeah. room, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you've got that engine sitting right behind you there. I mean, you might be able to pick a little bit of this up on the mic. So uh, it does give it a total different dimension, I guess, to the to the engine note because it's sitting so close to you. It, does, it reminds me of a Mark II MR2 I owned many years ago. Um, you're used to having that induction noise coming from in front of you, but yeah, it's actually quite nice. I definitely think that's where the fun at. I definitely think that's where the fun is in these, keeping it above 4,000 revs and uh, hoping you don't blow the head gasket. <laughs> it's definitely just shy a bit of power in it, that VVC. Should have bought the 160. It's just, you just feel it there, like seeing third, it's just, you could wring its neck in second, but. Right, suspension. So I actually quite like the way this one's set up. I thought it might have been a little bit too harsh, but when you're just taking it easy on these country roads, I think it's quite compliant. It's soaking up a lot of the, the, the bumps and undulations. Uh, it's certainly a lot softer than the Mark III MX-5 I had, so that's pretty decent. Uh, I find it does, it turns in pretty well, this one. Um, these eye-back springs, I, I quite rate them. Um, I haven't been going 10 tenths on the test drive, but it certainly has held the road pretty well. The steering is a little bit light for my liking, um, but I guess it's fine once you get used to it. 
and brakes, well, I mean, it does have a brake pedal and it does reduce the car's speed, but um, I believe these are due to be upgraded later in the year to make them a, a good bit more effective than they currently are. And when you do stand on these, it does pull the car over to the right a little bit, so you have to counteract that with your steering. So that adds to the character a little bit. Uh, but it'll be interesting to test drive it again once the brakes are done. I think with this, that engine sitting so close, you do feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. Uh, but it's a whole load of fun. Especially for 135 brake and how much the car actually cost in the first place to buy, you know, they're a real bargain now. Um, Two-seater convertible, you know, they can be had for under £2,000 quite easily. Um, gears. Um, PG1 gearbox in these, uh, obviously it's behind you instead of in front of you, I'm not sure it's the best way that they've set up the linkage. There is quite a lot of play. Well, without even changing gear, there's quite a lot of uh, play in all directions on the gear stick. You do get used to it. Um, once you get around that play, it's, it's reasonably precise and accurate, I think. Uh, so it maybe it's just a case there's a bit of wear on one of the linkages, but yeah, I think it is actually pretty good fun blasting around these country roads. Pretty good fun, isn't it? I think it's a fun car. Yeah, I mean, considering like we're not wringing his neck, we're under 60 and it's still. I think it's because that. Your typical two seat uh, sports car, it's underpowered, but you're that low at the ground, it's feel like you're going faster than you I think you it's because that's behind you. Mm. It sounds like, you know, you're. And they do sound good, K series. Yeah, they? yeah. They do sound. Right, so what's the conclusions on the MGTF? A thumbs up or a thumbs down? I mean, there's obviously various different engine options you can choose. It would be interesting to drive that 160 uh, to see how much quicker it is. I reckon that's probably the sweet spot, that one, and the one I would probably go for if I was intending buying one. Now, in terms of negatives, as I mentioned earlier, I wasn't particularly keen on um, the, the pedal arrangement. I have actually gotten more used to it now we're getting to the end of the test drive. Uh, it is a little bit odd. So there's that gear change, um, I would have to drive another couple to see if this is typical of TFs, so I'm not particularly bought into the gear change on it, and the last thing that I think would put me off buying one would be access to that engine. <laughs> Cars I buy always seem to require a lot of TLC and maintenance, and it does sound like a little bit of a faff on getting access to the, the front of the engine um, to do odd jobs on it. But on a positive note, um, would I have it rather than the MX-5? Well, it seemed to be quite different to the MX-5. The MX-5 was a little bit more agile, I think, a little bit more darty on those country roads. That's not to say that this didn't handle well as well. It was just a little bit different. It seemed to be a little bit softer. Um, pressing on in terms of engines, well, there were similar horsepower, I think, between that and the 1.8 that I had. So I don't think there's really much between them. You have to wring both their necks to get the best performance out of them. So in terms of two-seater sports car, it's definitely a fun little car to drive. So I think the you know that combination of that Revy engine, you're sitting nice and low, um, the handling's actually pretty decent. Yeah, brakes, well, brakes can be improved, so wait till next time I drive it to give a final conclusion on them. But yeah, I think a little fun sports car definitely ticks the boxes for that. And it adds another dimension, um, certainly into the soundtrack, having the engine right behind you. Um, I think that's another interesting part to this car. In terms of money-wise, if you're getting one of these for under two grand, I mean, there will be a, a wide range, maybe up to, what, four grand? Depends on the condition. Depending on the condition of mileage. Doing. Yeah, and I have seen some quite nice spec'd okay. up, 160, so... The LE 500s are still going for 8, 9, 10. Are they, right, you right. get sheds for 300 quid, right, so yeah. it depends. So I guess basically what we're saying there is, you know, there's an MGF for everyone's budget, um, with various different engine options and two gearbox options, so there is one for everybody. Um, for me, I would probably want one with a, a wee bit more power, um, as you'll see there on that test drive. And third, it was just a wee bit lacking. You'd have probably have, in third, it was a wee bit lacking. You'd probably have to knock it down into second um, to, you know, to, to really get it moving along. 
steam. Look. Yeah, there definitely is steam. <laughs> the first time that's happened in a test drive. Well, well, well.